On the AP exam, there will be four free response questions. This video is modeled after FRQ number three. It's about modeling real-world situations using sine or cosine functions. Let's pretend it's from the 2013 exam. If you appreciate this content, please give it a like. A toy car travels around a circular track as shown in the figure to the right. The center of the circular track is 20 inches from the wall. At time t equals 0 seconds, the distance between the toy car and the wall is 0 inches. The car completes one full lap around the track every 8 seconds. As the toy car travels around the track at a constant speed, the distance between the car and the wall periodically increases and decreases. The periodic function h models the distance in inches between the toy car and the wall as a function of time t in seconds. Part A. The graph of h and its dashed midline for two full cycles is shown. Five points, f, g, j, k, and p, are labeled on the graph. No scale is indicated, and no axes are presented. Determine possible coordinates, t, comma, h of t, for the five points f, g, j, k, and p. Let's begin by developing a vertical scale. Remember, these numbers represent inches from the wall. The minimum distance between the toy car and the wall is zero inches. So the lowest value on this scale should be zero. The center of the circular track is 20 inches from the wall. So that's going to be the value of the midline of the graph of h of t. Because of the way the circular track touches the wall, the diameter of the circle is also the maximum distance of the car from the wall. So the furthest distance that the car will get from the wall is 40 inches. This maximum distance from the wall is reflected by a 40 on the highest value of the vertical scale. We now have the output value of all five points. Now let's see if we can find the input value for each of these five points. At time t equals zero seconds, the distance between the toy car and the wall is zero inches. Zero inches is the lowest distance that the car can possibly be. So we need to pick a low value like j and call it t equals zero. The car completes one full lap around the track every eight seconds. In other words, the period is eight seconds. That means the time from point F to point P is eight seconds, but it also means that the time from point J to point P is half that, or four seconds. So this must be an input value of four seconds. Half of that is two seconds. Working backwards, we can see that each quarter of a period is two. So going to the left two seconds, we have negative two, and another two seconds gives us negative four seconds. And just in case we need it, let's go one more quarter period to the left, and that would be negative six seconds. Now we have the input coordinates and the output coordinates for all five points. So let's make a list. Point F is at negative four comma 40. Point G is at negative two comma 20. Point J is at zero comma zero. Point K is at two comma 20. And point P is at four comma 40. Part B, the function H can be written in the form H of T equals A times the sine of B times T plus C plus d. Find the value of the constants a, b, c, and d. I want you to memorize what these parent functions look like. This is y equals sine t, and this is y equals cosine t. Notice that cosine t starts at its highest value, then it falls to its lowest value, and ends back at its highest value again. By contrast, notice that sine t starts at the midline, then it climbs to its highest value, falls to its lowest value, 
and ends back at the midline. Since h of t is the image of sine t after four transformations, let's trace one period of the sine function on h of t, which will look like this. We can discover the values of a, b, c, and d by finding the transformations that will change the parent function into h of t. Let's build an expression for h of t, filling in the values of a, b, c, and d as we go along. In unit one, we learned that the a value corresponds to a vertical dilation. Notice that on the parent function, the distance between the midline and the maximum value is one. Now let's look at h of t. The distance between the midline and the maximum value is 20. So a distance of one has become a distance of 20. In other words, we have a vertical dilation by a factor of 20. Therefore, the a value is 20. In the context of periodic functions, this vertical dilation is called the amplitude. I want you to memorize this formula for the b value, which is given by two pi divided by the period. In this case, the period is eight seconds. So the b value will be two pi divided by eight. Two goes into eight four times. So b simplifies to pi over four. The pi over four goes right here, that's the b value. In unit one, we learned that the c value is the opposite of the horizontal translation. Notice that one period of the parent function starts at t equals zero. However, this period of h of t begins at t equals negative six. Therefore, we are looking at a horizontal translation by negative six. The c value will be the opposite of that, so positive six. In the context of periodic functions, a horizontal translation is called a phase shift. In unit one, we learned that the d value corresponds to a vertical translation. Notice that the parent function has a midline of y equals zero. Compare that to a midline of y equals 20 for h of t. That's a vertical translation by 20, therefore the d value is 20. For a sinusoidal function, the d value will simply be the midline. On the AP exam, they will give you an answer box that you may use to record your values of a, b, c, and d if you like. Or you can leave the answer box blank and record your answer as an expression for h of t with the values of a, b, c, and d filled in like this. Part C, refer to the graph of h in part A. The t coordinate of g is t1, and the t coordinate of j is t2. We're talking about the input coordinates of point g and point j. So t1 is negative two, and t2 is zero. C part one. On the interval from t1 to t2, which of the following is true about h? Is h positive and increasing, positive and decreasing, negative and increasing, or negative and decreasing? On the interval from t1 to t2, the output values are all between zero and 20. These are all positive values. Also, notice that the output values are falling from left to right on this interval. So, h of x is positive and decreasing on the interval from t1 to t2. And the answer is b. c, part two. Describe how the rate of change of h is changing on the interval from t1 to t2. In unit one, we learned that wherever h of t is concave up, the rate of change is increasing. And wherever h of t is concave down, the rate of change is decreasing. Since h of t is concave up on this interval, that means the rate of change is increasing. Since they did not ask us to explain our reasoning, 
it's safest to give a one word answer. Just say increasing. Part D. Find the period, frequency, amplitude, and midline for the graph of H. The period was the length of one cycle. That was 8 seconds. The frequency is the reciprocal of the period, so 1 over 8. The amplitude is the distance between the midline and the highest value. This distance is 20. So the amplitude is 20. What about the midline? The midline is the horizontal line halfway between the highest value and the lowest value. The equation of a horizontal line is always y equals something. So don't just put 20. For the midline, you should put the equation y equals 20. Part E. Find two intervals for which the graph of h is both increasing and concave down. H of t is concave down on these two intervals. H of x is increasing on these three blue intervals. H of x is both concave down and increasing on the interval from negative 6 to negative 4, and again on the interval from 2 to 4. So this is the answer to part E. Hey guys, don't forget to like and subscribe. But also, if you found this video helpful, there's a lot more where that came from. You can click the upper link, which will take you to the whole unit playlist, or you can click the lower link, which will take you to the next video in the playlist. See you there.